It's on? Can you hear me out there? Yep. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, so my talk is about the state of Node Core right now. Um, last night I was actually at a bar drinking with Ian, and he said, how do you keep up with everything that's going on in Node right now? And I was like, well, you kind of just don't. Um, <laughs> there's way too much stuff going on for one person to like watch every repo and understand, you know, digest it all. So I'm kind of hoping that this talk will help kind of break down some of the, uh, like the bullet points of what's going on. Um, this is actually the third time I've given a variation of this talk. So the first time was after Node 4 came out. Um, and then, you know, there's so much going on that it's easy to just update and recycle the same slides. <laughs> so the history of Node, um, originally Joyent was the uh, corporate steward of the project, and they practiced a benevolent dictator for life model where uh, there was first Ryan Dahl, then Isaac Schluter, then TJ Fontaine, and I guess um, I don't know if anyone considers Julian Gilly to be one, but he kind of was towards the end there. <clears throat> and so under Joint, they practiced an even odd versioning scheme where there was uh, odd, odd numbered releases were kind of <coughs> unstable and you shouldn't use them. And the even numbers were considered production ready. And so it, was, it led to like a really long drawn out development cycle where Updating from like 0 0.8 to 0 0.10 to 0 0.12 was um, considered pretty painful breaking changes. And so a lot of people got fed up with uh, kind of waiting for things. So node 10 was 0 0.10 was released in March of 2000. What happened to the screen? <laughs> okay. So 0 0.10 was released in March of 2013. And uh, then it was what, almost two years went by where 0 0.12 was consistently almost ready to be released. And so a lot of people in the community got frustrated with Joyent. They thought that maybe they weren't taking the right steps with the project that they should have, um, that maybe it wasn't possible for a company to kind of have the best interest of an open source project in mind. So then in mid-2014, um, a little project called Node Forward kind of surfaced, and it was kind of a rallying cry from contributors to the community to say, let's take the project back and kind of make it our own again. Um, and it was pretty cool because they created a private fork, and they were landing pull requests and, um, you know, closing the same issues that were being left dormant on the joint node repo. But there was one really big problem, and that was that uh, because it was called Node Forward, they couldn't actually make any releases um, or they would have been sued. So then they decided, well, what if we still do a fork and we just rename it something else? So uh, the name was actually picked IOJS, and uh, it was actually pretty successful, at least in the community. I think adoption only got to about 3%, but it was still really cool because Joint kind of took notice. Um, they were actually able to start making releases. So uh, IOJS released 1.0 after, I think, two months of develop development, whereas Joyent still had not released 0 0.12. And IOJS actually shipped with an up-to-date version of V8, which was a huge deal to everyone because uh, the one that was in 0 0.12 when it was released was actually out of date already, um, and IOJS shipped with the same version of V8 that was currently in Chrome at the time, which meant people got ES, some ES6 features, and if you know JavaScript developers, that's like all they care about. <laughs> so like I said, Joint took notice, and uh, they were like, okay, uh, we're gonna release 0 0.12. That happened in February of 2015. They also decided that they were going to listen to the community and put the project into a foundation. Um, which went on to be called the Node Foundation. And so in May of 2015, so I guess a year ago now, uh, the IOJS technical committee voted and said, yes, we're going to come back together with, with Joint Node. So this uh, led to an interesting uh, GitHub repo shuffle where there was, and I have to check my notes because I always mess this up, there was IOJS slash IO.js, 
which was moved to Node.js slash IOJS. And there was Joint Node, which became Node.js slash Node v0 dot x dash archive. And then the IOJS that had just been renamed ended up just becoming uh, Node.js Node. So after all that, um, the foundation you know, was official. Uh, I think there's now currently around 30 companies that are putting money towards the project, which is really cool. Um, and then a nice thing that came out of the convergence was that there wasn't confusion in the community anymore. So one of the things that would always happen when IOJS was going on is people would show up and they would say, is this production ready? Or how is this different from Node? Um, and it was, you know, people would just have to tell them, it's pretty much Node 0.12. It just is different. And people just didn't get it. So there was now one project again, and everybody was happy. So then after all the convergence drama was over, they got down to actually shipping code. And so they drew up um, plans for how they would release versions of Node. And the first converged branch was uh, v4, which came out in September of 2015. Um, again, it shipped with a stable version of v or a current version of v8. Um, but there was still a little bit of confusion because people wanted to know what is v4. Like you were on 0 0.10 and then. 0.12 came out. Some people had never heard of IOJS. They were like, I think there was a tweet like, don't you know how to count? Like people were, <laughs> there, was, there was some hostility involved. But uh, so then we had to explain like, technology is hard. Get a Mac. Oh. Get a Mac? <laughs> 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 Should I switch to the Thunderbolt? The AV man comes to save the day. <laughs> Should I dance or something up here? <laughs> Take this up. So where is my presentation at now? <laughs> you mirrored. Uh, I was mirrored. Here's the display options. Two gather windows. Oh man. Uh, gather windows. Right. What do we have over here? Okay. That's where so the that's presentation where we should be. be. Where is it? Uh, simpler to shut it down and open yeah, it back up properly. Probably, yeah. Come on. Up. Good, good, good to go. <laughs> okay, so anyways, we're back to V4. Um, <laughs> I don't have my notes anymore, but that's okay, I'll wing it. Uh, so uh, one of the things that this came with was first class support for ARM um, in the new build infrastructure. And by the end of 2015, V4 had actually taken about 26% of the market share, which was nice because that meant people were actually using it. Um, but one of the problems, and I've kind of alluded to it, was that we have to track V8, and that's kind of not easy to do because V8 releases every six weeks, and it's kind of written by Google for Google Chrome, and everyone else is just kind of along for the ride. Um, and so Chrome is evergreen, so they take the latest versions and then they throw the old ones out. Um, and that doesn't really work for a server environment like Node, because we have to not break people's code all the time. Uh, they have, V8 has a C++ API, which they are kind of aggressive with changing. 
um, at a moment's notice. It's actually gotten a lot better, and the relationship between Node and the V8 team has in improved. But uh, the C++ API is kind of where they would always break things. And while this doesn't ex you know, directly impact a lot of modules that are written on NPM that are pure JavaScript, uh, there are a few important native modules that are written in C++, and those get broken. And then because of you know, 12 levels deep node module dependencies, it bubbles up and breaks roughly 30% of the NPM ecosystem. And I think that last I saw, there was like close to 270, 75,000 modules. So 30% of that is a lot. Um, so they've created a project called NAN. It's Native Abstractions for Node.js, where they, try, they kind of put uh, a layer on top of the V8 API to try to make it backwards compatible. But they can't really predict what's going to happen in the future. So it's not like necessarily the, the uh, perfect solution. So they had to come up with a long-term support policy, and that has to balance the needs of keeping up with V8 so that we have you know, a modern uh, security patched version of V8 with not breaking the community uh, every six weeks. So the, they decided to kind of balance the two with every six months they would, they would take a new V8 that would potentially be breaking. Um, but then once, it, once something becomes LTS, it would be supported for 18 months and then after that 18 months, it would go into what's known as maintenance mode, where basically it just gets the most important security patches. Um, and that's kind of a way to let people use the new, uh, the new releases to stay up to date, but also allow enterprises to use these old, uh, old releases that are supported for 30 months. And then there's actually a six month overlap between LTS versions where they can then update from, say, V4 to V6. So it's very confusing, and there's a picture that makes it a little less confusing. Um, at the very top, we have the master branch, which is where all current development goes on in Node Core. Then we have Node 0.10 and 0.12, which were grandfathered in. Um, by the end of the year, they will end their maintenance and be completely end of life. So if you are still using one of those, you should definitely update. Um, then there's V4, which uh, according to the LTS policy, it was supposed to be cut and then have six months before it went into official LTS mode. But because it was kind of a corner case with a brand new uh, LTS policy, it got in after, I think, a month. So it's currently the LTS version. Um, and then in April of next year, it will go into maintenance mode for a year. So then there's node V5, where the odd releases are considered uh, current. So if you've seen this old graph, it was, they used to be called stable. Um, just to confuse people, they renamed it. That's the, literally the only difference. Uh, stable is now current. Um, but, but these ones are only supported for six to nine months. Um, and so now that, now that V6 has been cut, Node 5 will be end of life in the next month or two. So if you're using that, you should also upgrade. So then Node V6 was released um, in April, so last month. And it's kind of the, the first uh, long-term support release that's going through from start to finish the, in, the entire policy. So um, it's the, currently the current branch. And then in October, after having a chance to bake for six months, it'll be ready for LTS where it'll go through 18 months and then into its maintenance and end of life. Um, and then if we look into the future in October, uh, V7 will be released. It'll follow kind of the same pattern as V5. And then, um, what is that, April of 2017, node V8. Seriously? <laughs> Should have electricity, but thank you. Yeah, it says I have eighty three percent battery, so I shouldn't be dead. All right, back to the LTS plans. What's your power settings? The power settings says that turn off 
your screen after five minutes when the battery does it for you? Uh, maybe. <laughs> All right, moving along. So the first LTS release was V420, or the stoner edition. Um, <laughs> that, that went to LTS uh, October 12th, 2015. It was the fifth release out of the V4 line, and it became the first LTS release. Uh, per the LTS policy, we would uh, give these releases names from the periodic table. So the first one was given the name Argon. Um, and you can differentiate between uh, things that are LTS versus not LTS by looking at process.release.lts. That will be undefined. If it is not an LTS release, it'll have the code name, such as argon, if it is. And so everyone was excited because ES6. Um, so these were some of the features that went into LTS. So people can now reliably use things like Latin const, arrow functions, symbols, classes, things like that. Um, and then if you look at some of the percentages, Node v4 was up to about 53% native ES6 support, which was up from 17% on 0 0.12. So that was a huge jump. And at the time, because um, this is an old picture, Babel was only at like 71%. So that was still pretty good. Then in October, Node v5 was released. So like I said, the beginning of the LTS policy, everything was really rushed. Um, so it was supposed to be every six months. It was one month. Um, but this was the first one that was designed not to go into LTS. It was just going to be the current branch. Um, and so th this pulls in all of the non-breaking changes that are made, things like Semver Minor, like a, the new features. So people can play with them and still kind of get the, that IOJS feel that people were missing. Um, and then I have some links throughout my slides. This is the breaking change doc between V4 and V5 if you feel like looking at the slides later, you can click some links. Um, but yeah, this is only going to be supported for a maximum of eight months as compared to 30 for the LTS. And so Node, Node 6 came out. Um, most importantly, it had a new logo. The old one just wasn't cutting it anymore, I guess, so things don't change enough in the JavaScript community. Um, <laughs> but this was just at the end of April of last month, or last month, April. Um, it has V8, V5. Um, eventually there will be a V8, V8, and that'll just be confusing. But uh, it's the same as what's currently in Chrome. Some notable things are that it drops support for XP and Vista, and it drops support for old versions of OS X. Um, we now have, I guess you could say, official support for IBM and PowerPC, um, because IBM is like really involved in the project now. Um, and so this is the one that will follow Argon into LTS come October. So we need some names for it. Um, it'll pr I don't know, that nobody's really talked about naming it, but I assume it'll still have uh, an element name. So these are your choices if we go with the B route. Um, my personal vote is for Boron because people who are especially not native English speakers are going to have to spell and say this. So don't be a moron and vote for Boron. <laughs> And we got even more ES6 features, and the peasants rejoiced. Um, we're now up to about 96%. You'll see different numbers um, depending on like what day of the week you look at the charts and alignment of the planets. But I think it's about 96%, 93% without any flags. Um, some of these features are all, were already available in V5, but um, LTS or didn't happen. Um, so we have default parameters, the spread operator, rest parameters, which are probably my favorite thing. And there are also some breaking changes. Now, because we're now doing Semver, um, it's not like back in the joint days where we go from 0 0.10 to 0 0.12 and there would be a huge list of things that broke. Uh, new features come out in you know every Semver minor patch. Bugs are fixed all the time. So we try not to break a lot of backwards compatibility. So like, Th some things that were already deprecated have been removed. Some new things that don't work right or people aren't really using have been deprecated and will probably be removed in the future. Uh, there's been some improved type checking added to some functions. So now if you call process.next tick and you don't pass it a function, it'll blow up immediately instead of trying to do something. Um, so what else? Uh, improved logging and handling of errors. So now 
node's internal logging will say like node colon and it'll give you like the process ID. So it's useful for debugging node, especially clustered applications uh, where you might not know exactly what process is doing what. Uh, you can now finally assign to underscore in the REPL. Uh, it's kind of a magic value that the REPL uses for the result of the last thing that you did. Um, now what will happen is you can, you can assign directly to it if you're using something like Lodash and instead of blowing up or not working, it'll just, it'll discontinue doing the, uh, the old behavior and start using your value. Uh, the V4 map DNS hint is no longer set by default. Um, I actually introduced this back in like 0 0.11 and it was just awful because some OSs didn't support it at all and so we would get uh, some hacky code like if platform is free BSD and something else and something else then don't set the flag so we just removed that completely. Um, cluster had a suicide flag that didn't really make a lot of sense um, and also just wasn't a very friendly term so that has been re re uh, replaced. It's still there but it'll, it's deprecated. You should now use exited after disconnect uh, once again, I have a link down in the slides if you want to check out the breaking changes doc. Uh, so now we have safe buffers. So back in January of this year, there was actually a remote memory disclosure vulnerability. So you probably understand now, but you might not have if you'd seen this before. So you have new buffer 1000 and then new buffer string 1000. Um, the new buffer 1000 would just allocate a big chunk of uninitialized memory, kind of like malloc in C, whereas new buffer 1000 with the string would change the, the string 1000 into a buffer. And so what would happen is people would mix them up because in JavaScript people don't like to type check. And so it was possible using the very popular WS module that you could get large chunks of uninitialized memory back from the server, which would include things like passwords or private key information. So v6 has deprecated the new buffer uh, in favor of buffer.from, buffer.alloc, and buffer.alloc unsafe. Um, so from is what will you, you would use if you were converting like a string or an array buffer, whereas dot alloc and alloc unsafe are kind of like the old uh, buffer 1000 with a number constructor and alloc will make it safe and initialize it for you whereas alloc unsafe is you should know what you're doing or you could get burned um, and people danced so v6 was actually adopted fairly quickly uh, so this tweet from npm uh, three days after its release, Node v6 accounts for 4% of registry, registry traffic. Um, and I don't know exactly what day this tweet came out, but that was three days. Um, so if you just do the math and you multiply by a, a percentage or so, we've got to be up to like 50% utilization by now. So then there's still other things under development um, in Node. It moves really fast and things are always being bike shedded. Um, some of these things may or may not make it into core, but these are just the kind of like most interesting things going on right now, I'd say. So ES6 modules, uh, this is a tough one. This conversation may or may not have happened, but Node has a pretty large module ecosystem and TC39 invented ES6 modules um, and they don't really mesh well with what's on NPM. And so we need a way to reliably and efficiently handle both. Um, and so if you go to the link at the bottom, there's a, you could spend probably an entire day reading all the over 500 comments about how we should implement ES6 modules. One is to uh, use a new file extension, .mjs, um, because you know a lot of file extensions are already taken, so <laughs> you wouldn't think MJS, but whatever. Um, so it's kind of being nicknamed Michael Jackson script. <laughs> so, the king of pop, um, but yeah, so we're not really even sure when or if Node is going to implement these, but I think if they did, that the TSC is kind of leaning towards uh, Michael Jackson's script. 
uh, integration of Chrome's dev tools. So this one, this issue is kind of stalled out a little bit, but uh, there's links to a proof of concept and a full discussion um, where you can try things out. Basically, it would integrate Chrome's dev tools directly into V8, which means Node would have them out of the box. So I think that would be pretty cool if it worked out. One of the main contentious issue is that uh, I believe it would require WebSocket support in Node. So there's been some discussion, should we have WebSockets and just not expose, expose them to users, but then people will be mad because they want WebSockets and we won't give it to them. So um, that's the state of that. Promises um, are always controversial. So there's been a lot of work to get promises into Node Core. Uh, there was a PR and it had, again, like over 500 comments on it. Um, nothing really came out of it and they just kind of created a working group and said, okay, you guys go play over here and Node.js promises. Um, I'm not personally a promise user, so I'm not sure what the status of that is now, but uh, our TC39 overlords have kind of chosen promises for us in the future, so I imagine at, one, at some point they will get into Node. And then Chakra support, um, I wish I could have gone before the last talk because <laughs> he covered this in way more than one slide. Uh, but basically, Chakra is now an option to run on top of Node. Um, we have also put them into their own little corner, Node.js slash Node-Chakra uh, core. Um, and I guess the goal there is to try to figure out if we're gonna bring it in because it bloats the repo size significantly. Um, if a lot of people want to have multiple VM support, which is probably a good thing. Um, but there's some issues right now, like I think some of the tests were still failing and it just wasn't quite ready for prime time. But I would, I, you know, as you heard in the last talk, you can now run it and play with it and it seems pretty cool to me. Um, and that is all I have. I'm sorry for all the technical problems. <laughs>